Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the Cornerstone Builder. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to get creative with both layering effects and background effects natively within the Cornerstone Builder. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are in the Cornerstone Builder, and as you can see, we have our setup right here. But in the nature of walking you through how to do this, we are going to go ahead and start from scratch. So we'll add a new section right below this, and we will get to work. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use rows and columns, but you could also use cells or divs to create this effect as well. You simply need some sort of parent container to house everything inside of. Now, the first thing that we're going to do with this parent container is set up some basic configurations. So I'm going to go ahead and select column one here. I'm going to set my overflow to hidden. And that basically ensures that when things scale out, they don't scale beyond the border of my column. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of padding. So I'm going to come in here and maybe make this, I'm making this up, but something like three M's of padding all the way around my column here. And then the last thing I'm gonna do for my column is jump into effects here and make sure that my link child interaction settings are enabled. And I'm just gonna leave these all selected as the default. And what that means is when I hover on this column, anywhere in this column, the effects take place. So in our example above, I can hover anywhere on this. I can hover on the text. I can hover on anything and our effect is triggered. And so that is driven by this link child interaction setting right here. So with that done, we can begin designing things out. So within our column here, we're going to add two elements. We'll go ahead and click add element. The first one is going to be a div and we'll call this one our background image. And the second one is going to be our headline. So we'll come in here and do something like this. Now in our background image, we'll go ahead and select that. And under advanced background, we will set a background image and we'll choose something like our running shoes image here. We'll scroll down a little bit further and under position, we're gonna change this from relative to absolute zero. And we can actually just use this little shortcut right here and that will stretch it to the width of our parent container. Now you'll notice it's covering up our headline text that we added in there. So the next step is to make this an actual background image by setting our Z index from one to negative one, and that will throw it into the background. And now you can see our headline there. The one other thing I might wanna do with this image in particular is maybe add some sort of upper overlay just so that our headline text is visible. Now I'll come in here and do our headline text and I'll make this white. And I think that's coming together nicely. That's looking pretty good. Now, if I wanted its position to be vertical end like we have up here, I'm gonna do that on the column level because you gotta remember this headline is not inside of our background image container. It's actually separate inside of the column. So I'm gonna go into the column and I'll enable Flexbox and I'll set our vertical position to end and that'll drop our headline down to the bottom there. All right, that's all looking pretty good. Now the last step is to simply create our animation. So with the background image selected here, we'll go into effects, we'll go into interaction effects, we'll enable our interaction effects and we'll enable transform effects. First, we'll jump into our filter, we'll add a new filter for blur and maybe bring this down just a little bit to three pixels. And then we'll jump into our transform here and we'll add a scale transform and I like something like 1.5 across the board. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that when we do that, it's kind of quick. So we can control our transition duration on the effects using this transition duration setting right here. By default, this is going to be 300 milliseconds. I find that somewhere around 1200 milliseconds looks nice and elegant. And now when we hover, that is looking great. If we wanted to take this a step further, we could click on our column where we have our background image and our headline element. And we could actually add another div. Now this div we'll call our background border and we'll go ahead and inspect that div. Now within this div, we wanna do two things. The first thing is we wanna set our position to absolute zero again, just like our background image. The second thing is we wanna add a slight border. In my case, I'm gonna add a one pixel border with a color of white. Now I'll jump into my effects I'm gonna match the transition duration of my other effects, but you could play around with this and do some sort of offset. But for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna go with 1200 milliseconds again. And then we'll enable interaction transform effects. And under transform, we'll add a scale again. But instead of scaling this up to 1.5, like we did with the background image, we are actually going to scale this down to 0.9. And now when we hover, we get that nice little white border that comes into frame. 
And now you can take this and abstract this into your designs as well. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!